Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. I'm a 33. So what does that mean, 33? I'm your 33. That's numerology. A lot of people say that's hocus pocus, that's new age, you're looking. What it is, is I'm also, by the way, I'm a fire rooster. So if you know the Chinese zodiac, you see all those animals, you go to a Chinese restaurant, they show you the animals, you look up your date. And um, so I'm a rooster. And then there's five elements in the Chinese um, zodiac. Um, and I'm the fire one. So that means, um, you know, something as well. So it kind of tells you who somebody is as a person. So 33 is one of the master numbers in numerology. And there's a reason I'm telling you all this. Um, I'm not trying to educate you on numerology or anything like that. But basically what you do is you take your birthday and you add it up, all the dates. So I'm my, my birthday is uh, September 20th, 1957. So that, that's so if you look at my birthday, so I'm I have 11 um, because you got September 20th. Uh, so that's a nine plus two, and then 1957. That's a 22, and then those add up to 33. So I'm actually an 11, a 22, and a 33 all um, all put together. Those are the master numbers. And that doesn't mean you're you're better than anyone else or you're or you're special or anything like that. They are, you know, they are people, you know, that tend to drive things forward, give you new ideas, go out and, you know, preach to the world and tell people different ideas and, you know, maybe write things or make special videos. But if you look up 33s, like just look, Google it, you'll see there's lots of famous people that are 33s. Now, uh, and as I said, I'm also a fire rooster. And a rooster, you think about it, they're walking around, they got their chest out, but they're they're always protecting other people. And a fire rooster, that's someone who's like really, really, you know, um, passionate. And that's me. That's me. So just because like the most special uh, name or person, I should say, or animal is the dragon. Um, and you want to be a dragon. If you look at the really great leaders in history, many of them, not all, were dragons. But that doesn't mean just because you're a dragon, you're going to be successful. You're successful people. I've seen some people that are kind of losers, that are dragons, and very mediocre people that are dragons, very mediocre people that are 33. So it kind of gives you what, here's your potential. You're, you, you know, um, you're a 33. Well, you, this is what you, you are, and maybe you're going to go end up working in a gas station and never be heard of and never do anything special because whatever, your life, you know, you, it's all about free will. And so... Um, I am the 33, um, the master teacher. So I've got to teach people things and think outside the box and teach people new things. So that's what I do in my work. That's what I do with my, what, what I do here as a naturopathic doctor. I mean, I'm preaching something that very few people um, understand or latch on to. I tell them, I talk about alkaline ionized water. That has been called, you know, the biggest scam and snake oil and all this stuff or snake water or whatever you want for since since I got into this and I could never understand why because it's the most amazing substance and the most valuable substance in in nature um, that's why I wrote my book the miraculous properties of ionized water the definitive guide to the world's healthiest substance there's nothing better than water you know it's identical to raw fruits and vegetables in every single characteristic except there's no nutrients in alkaline ionized water so that's what I always preach I brought, I'm probably done more to, um, you know, talk about spirulina and chlorella. And I, my latest book is about spirulina and chlorella exclusively, nothing else. Um, and, um, you know, people don't use this for your protein. Don't eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. They're, you know, they're, they're secondary food sources. They're the middleman. They're eating the plant. There's no nutrients that we can't get from uh, the plant world that you know, we, we have to go to the animal world for, okay? You, you get everything there. I mean, I tell people all the time, as maybe you've heard my videos, you know, I'm a vegan. And somebody will say, well, you know, um, I eat meat and all this kind of stuff. I say, well, we have, you know, and I eat chicken. And all. Well, we have, we have something in common. I'm a vegan and all the animals you eat are vegans. How about that? So, um, but you tell that to the average person and their eyes glaze over. I mean, no, they got to eat meat. You, you know, I hear it all the time still. This is the world's healthiest substance, meat. It's not. Meat is the most nutrient-dense, perfect food for humans. It just is. It's such an exhausting conversation when you say that to people. It's an inferior food. It's, to me, a kind of survival food. And I've said it a million times. You want to eat meat? Go eat meat. It doesn't matter. You're not putting it in my body. 
Um, I'm very questionable about the stuff you see in the supermarkets these days. Um, I don't think you really know everything that's going on there. In fact, I know you don't. But that's beside the point. It's just an, even if you if you're going to eat anything, go get it from a farmer. Um, which you know, like I know a farmer. That's all they do. They raise these this meat and these chickens, these eggs, or uh, at least because at least you know where it's coming from. Or go you know shoot a deer or something like that. Eat that. But that's what I recommend. But I'm outside the box. And the other thing is, of course, I promote a raw food diet, raw fruits and vegetables. I mean, who eats like this? Nobody. I'm, so I'm a vegan. First of all, I've been a vegetarian 42, almost 43 years now, um, and and who when I became and that was in 1980 when I became a vegetarian. Nobody had ever heard of a vegetarian. I mean, it was it, there were vegetarians, but there was almost nobody like that. And you know, people would say, "You're a vegetarian, okay? You, you eat chicken, right?" And I said, "No, I don't eat chicken. No, or, you know, you eat fish. You know, I used to eat a little bit of fish back then. Then I became a vegan. Well, who's a vegan? Almost nobody. I mean, it's very popular today compared to where it was even when I started out in business 30 years ago." This is nobody was a vegan. The word vegan didn't even exist. Period. That was that came on about 15, 20 years ago at the most. You know, it was just a vegetarian. Then vegan came along. That what well, you don't eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. Okay, and um, so nobody knew what. The, why wouldn't you do that? Where are you going to get your protein? You're going to get them from spirulina and chlorella. So I'm always outside the box. And then and not only am I a vegan, I'm a raw food vegan. Well, who, how many raw food vegans are there? N none. I mean, it's such a small percentage of the population, you know, and I do this because I want to be healthy, you know, I want, I, I, I you know, I don't, I don't want to get old and get sick and, and, and die. I'm going to die and I don't know how, but it's going to be, you know, accident, murder, <laughs> assassination. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be, not suicide and it, I'm not going to die of a disease. I never have to worry about, boy, that, that, that test they took, that biopsy. Uh, they took, I'm worried about the results. It's never going to happen to me. I, I just don't have that fear. And why don't I have that fear? Because I know what you, you know, if, even if I were to get sick, I'm not going to. But even if something happened, I, I, I know uh, what to do to be healthy. And that's what I wrote my book, Care in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. You know, that tells you, the, you, you know, go what, what that's about. Go look in the mirror and you'll see the, uh, the cure for all diseases. You, your body. Okay, it's not about what you eat. That's not going to cure you. It's what your body is going to do with that. And it really cannot cure itself if you're feeding it processed foods, cooked foods, things out of a box, a jar, a can. Stay away from that stuff. That just becomes so contaminated at this point. Um, I really know the source of your food. I say it all the time because you not you got to know. And if you're going to the store and you're seeing the greens and, and you know, your spinach and kale and broccoli and all this you know, and onions, and you go home and, and eat it raw, like I do, it's not that hard. It just takes will to do it. Um, and it's not easy to stop eating cooked foods. And we're all addicted to cooked foods. And if you don't think you're addicted to cooked foods, try going one day without any cooked foods. You'll see how difficult it is. So, um, you know, and then I developed this seven component health protocol, where my first book was, you know, Achieving Great Health. So I did that. And I achieved, I, you know, I talked about Ionized water, alkaline ionized water, which nobody ever heard of, and uh, when it just dawned on me one day what that was, you know, like nobody could explain it. They just said, you know, you're you're adding electrons to one side. But I finally like had an epiphany. I, I realized it one day, many years ago, right? Almost, almost well over 25 years ago, to almost 30. So. Uh, spirulina and ionized water, spirulina and chlorella, raw fruits and vegetables. Okay, probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics were so new when I got into this 30 years ago. Um, but nobody ever heard of it. Um, the average person, no probiotic. Now it's a, now you get your microbiome and all that kind of stuff. That's a brand new word. I mean, it, it, in use. You know, it's been around 150 years, but nobody ever heard of microbiome. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about your microbiome. Okay, well, obviously, it's all about digestion. All disease comes from your diet. All disease comes. It doesn't. You don't inherit any disease. Well, cancer runs in my family. No, cancer doesn't run in your family. Dietary habits run in your family, and it's always the same dietary habits. You know, when you sit down to eat with your family, you don't have five different foods going on for five different people. You know, you got Russian food over here tonight, and Chinese food over here, and we're going to do Indian food, and then you're going to eat American food. It's all the same meal. And we do it night after night, day after day, and we all, you know, mom goes out or dad goes out and brings home the groceries, and it's always the same boxes of cereal and the same types of food. There's only like seven meals that people make. Talk about boring. 
um, that they shuffle in and out of their diet. That's it on average, seven meals total. And really it comes down to almost four of them. So what are we having? We have burger, this is burger night, okay. Everybody eats the same meals. So, you know, we don't have, a, you have a burger night, you have a ground beef night, you have this night, you have that, you know, chicken one night, you know, okay. And what do you get up in the morning? You eat omelets, eggs and bacon. This is just totally invented. You know, cereal, cereal, cereal didn't exist. That was Kellogg, it was made everybody, hey, you know, breakfast is the healthiest meal of the day. It's the most important meal of the day. No, just stop eating in the morning. Don't eat until noon like I do. Like I'm still fasting, I'm still, you know, I haven't eaten since last night. So I get this big fast every day, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours, every single day. And so, you know, we call that intermittent fasting, whatever. You know, fasting is the healthiest thing you can do for your body. So, you know, probiotics, prebiotics, fermented foods. I mean, we've been using them for thousands of years. Okay, but when did they come, when did people start actually eating fermented foods and, and knowing about fermented foods? Um, it's been really, you know, recent, you know, and same with, like I said, the probiotics, and we call prebiotics, fermented foods. And then I tell people to stay mineralized. Well, you know, there was um, Dr. Wallach, I think, Joel Wallach. I mean, dead, dead doctors don't lie. It was a great title for a book, but it was all about minerals. And that's great. You've got to stay mineralized. Every, there's, every single process, physiological process in the body depends on a mineral of some sort. If you don't, if you don't have magnesium, you may have a heart attack. You know, if you don't have cal calcium, you'll have, um, you know, no bones. I mean, and plus it does all these other things in the body. And we could go on. I, I sell a full spectrum a mineral that you can just uh, get all your minerals at once. Or I break them out into the morning minerals, the afternoon minerals, the evening minerals, these blends so they don't conflict with each other. But in, mineralization is, is incredibly important. Then vigorous daily exercise. Everyone knows, you know, any doctor will tell you, hey, diet and exercise. They never tell you what diet or what kind of exercise, you know, what, how long you should exercise, how intensely, no, diet and exercise. So they know diet is important. They know nothing about nutrition, medical doctors. They know about medical stuff. I don't know anything about medical stuff. You know, I mean, just as much as the average person, enough to be dangerous. Well, I wouldn't even recommend anything. Uh, I've never, I haven't been to the doctors in years and years. I, I go in for my blood tests and that's about it. Other than that, I'd, I would never go to the doctor. Because what are they gonna do for me? I mean, they're good in emergency situations. You get an accident, you cut yourself, you, you know, you hurt yourself, uh, you know, out doing the lawn or something like that. So you need doctors in emergency situations. Uh, physical therapy, they're fantastic. I, I know great physical therapy. Scott Benjamin, he's a great, really good guy. He helped me with my knee. It was my muscles really pulling on things. And, um, you know, I, I, but I, I work out usually about five days a week, sometimes six, and I work out 30 minutes, that's it. And very intensely, I run about three and a half miles or go three and a half miles on my elliptical or I go out and run in 20 minutes. And then I'm weightlifting and doing all that for another 10 minutes and then that's it. I like to jump in the fire infrared sauna after that. If you really want a great experience and a great health product and a great, it's the best health product in the world is a fire infrared sauna except for a water ionizer, that's number one. Vigorous daily exercise and of course staying positive. Positive mental attitude, having a relationship with God, praying, you know, you've got to have that, that's that seventh component. So that's Psalm 33. And I'm always teaching people things because that's what I was I'm meant to do or that's why, whatever, for whatever reason. I'm a fire rooster, so I'm always out there and I'm very boisterous and I want to be protective of people and I want to, I'm passionate about my message and I want to get it out because I'm a fire, fire rooster. And I, I, when I believe in something, I really believe in it. So, you know, like I believe in God, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I really believe in those things. I don't just say, well, you know, they're okay. So that, but that's a fire rooster. So, you know, again, you could be a fire rooster and no one, don't do these things. Cause just because you're a fire rooster doesn't mean you're gonna do, you know, it's just what your tendency is toward. And if you're 33, you, you know, have a tendency toward certain things. Um, 33s tend to be uh, very aggressive. Yeah, I'm not really all that aggressive, to be honest, but um, they're very aggressive pe people. And, uh, you know, they gotta tell you what they think. Well, that's kind of me. And people, most people, because of what I'm telling them, stop eating cooked and cooked uh, foods. They're looking at me like, what are you talking about? And uh, I tell them, don't eat be a vegan, it's much healthier. When they're looking at me again, like, what are you talking about? I'm gonna eat my burger, you know, here. It's like my right. It's, of course it's your right, you could do whatever you want. Do you wanna be healthy? Stop eating those foods. Um, so at any rate, uh, and by the way, I will say, 
briefly, weight loss is not health. Please, any listening to me, weight loss is not, it's, it can be a healthy thing, but it is not the path to health. You know, you, you don't want to be overweight um, and, and all this. But uh, anyway, so that's what I do. I'm a 33 and I'm a fire rooster. So that kind of explains Bob McCauley. That explains Dr. Bob and what I do and how I how I how I got here. I actually do the things like here's my 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 novel. Okay, that's a literary novel. Okay, that's a that's a really well written book. Um, it's the kind of books like nobody ever reads anymore. You know, it's like James Joyce or Stephen Crane. Uh, you know, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, Faulkner. It's on. It's in that genre. Okay, in that genre of book. I'm not comparing myself to them. Uh, that has to be somebody else to say, oh, this guy's really good. I think it's really well written. It's not that it's, you know, you're going to find it confusing, but it's difficult to read because, you know, it's up there. I mean, Hemingway was a very simple person to read. I'm not nearly as simple, but again, 33, you know, and that's why I wrote all these books. I've written nine books, working on my 10th book. I think I'm going to do one on fasting. That's what I really want to do because it's so important to fast, stop eating. Anyway, that's who I am, 33, Fire Rooster, Dr. Bob. See you guys next time.